that is a simple start. But this is quickly gonna give it, this is quickly going to get cavitational. Even that tail is gonna have some cavatory properties to it, cavernous, concaveness. I don't know, throwing those words out there like they mean something, you know? I do that a lot. Delfino 3 needs a new blade. As you can see, we're going straight back to making a bait that is reproducible. I'm sick of losing these baits that I'm trying to get down to the bottom to catch winter fish with. I, I just lost the last one really, that's it. But I've, that made me sick of that. So back to some interesting open pours. Yeah, without all of the craziness I'm about to add to it, that's a pretty sweet shape. I might leave the belly flat and give it that line on the bottom too. Make it a noticeable thing going through the body, even through all those cavities I'll put in it. Keep the lateral line back here maybe even. Nice chunky little fella, that's how I like them. Chunky little fellas. Going for an undercut on the belly there too and bringing the bottom of that tail to a point. That's gonna look good. With some translucent plastic, that's gonna look really good. I intend to make this super hollow and see what kind of action that has. The big wide hollow tail paddle. So I think whatever I do, I just need to remain consistent. I'm gonna use the diameter of this ball as kind of the gauge of how deep to go. No further than it is thick, you know? I want some serious cavitation in the body of this, but I gotta be careful. And it's gonna be random, but I need it to be even at the same time, random and even, so it doesn't swim lopsided. Wish me luck. So I made like a flower. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? That's not all I wanted to say. I'm gonna try to do that in the same spot on the other side and then just work out from there. And that, I think, will be what maintains my symmetrical-ness from side to side. Just a little spot up there I have to fill in. Otherwise, whoa, look at that. I'll clean this up as much as I can, but we have achieved some cavities. What's that one fear of like beehive shaped holes? I should look that up real quick. Tripophobia? Tripophobia. If you have that, I'm sorry. Cause that's kind of putting off the tripophobia vibe for sure. There were some spots I couldn't go as deep. I just had to fill them in so it didn't have just blank wood right there. Tried to kind of fade it out once I got to the tail. The tripophobia bait. Hope I'm saying that right. They're all a pretty even depth. I feel like there's a solid chunk running through the middle that the jig's gonna hook nicely into. And it's all pretty symmetrical. Like side to side, you can almost see a pattern. Let's get this tail hollowed out. Looks like a morel mushroom too. Dude, I carved those pretty good. I don't even want to sand them. I want to leave the sharp edges. And then when you put the sealer back over that, they stay really pronounced if you leave them sharp. So hopefully I can do the same on the other side. That is like the name of the game when it comes to lure making. Do the same on the other side. I did the same on the other side. That looks great. I'm getting this bait smooth and it's going smooth. Making sure I'm not leaving any fuzzies anywhere. That's pretty cool. 
straight to the triple thick. Man, everybody's gonna want a can of triple thick soon. I might need to get the brush out, get in there. Plus a bit of compressed air probably. That ain't bad. I think that any consecutive coats are gonna have to be from a fresh can sprayed on. That way it just, a thin coat everywhere lands, hits, and stays. And I don't have any drippage from here. No more drippage. That seems like a terrible spray. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that or if this is like a faulty can of this stuff, but it comes out in globs. But then it hits the bait and it smooths out nicely. Like it's not a bad finish. We'll see what one coat looks like. Triple thick to that might, might be okay. It looks glossy. Got some super glue up top. It's got a nice glossy, even beautiful finish all over. We're ready to mold. I'm pretty sure I have the opposite of trypophobia. That's like a pleasing look to me. I like it. It satisfies my mind. Once again, just throwing some super glue down to keep the mold box in place. No mold release, just 30 seconds of pressure. And we're gonna pour silicone into this. Not a big mold, probably like 10 ounces. I've gotten pretty good at judging how many ounces of silicone go into a mold box. And then I always decide to way overshoot it, just in case, you know. Yeah, like it, it just said 10 ounces and I'm putting more in because I don't trust my well-developed skill of judging how much. A couple more ounces, 12.5. Okay, it's well mixed. Time to pour slow. I want silicone to get into every cavity. That's a good starting point. Yeah, it looks like I mixed up about two and a half ounces too much. Who'd have thought? That pour went really smooth though. I'm gonna put it somewhere level like my table saw and see you guys tomorrow. Nice and clean again. That's exciting. There is a strange little air bubble on the tail back there. That, that kind of stuff doesn't really make a difference though. You can just pick that off with your fingers after the bait's poured. Pick off the flash in. That looks pretty sweet in there. Hopefully that produces a pretty crazy effect. All right, first color, bluish, purplish color shift. Unvacuumed, a little bubbly. I just want to fill this mold up and see what this thing looks like. Filled. Before even demolding that first one, I noticed an issue. There was air getting caught in those holes and they didn't fill in completely. So I'm trying this again already, but we're gonna brush silicone into those holes first. Really just get it in there. Then put the mold box over. I need a smaller brush. Yeah, that should help a lot. Hopefully that solves the bubble issues. And I uh, mixed up the correct amount of silicone, 10 ounces right here. I mean, 11 with the catalyst, it's a one to 10 mix ratio, but 11 ounces, perfect. Look at that. Won't even have to slice the bottom flat. 
All right, that one's ready to demold and you can see how imperfect it looks. The caverns are gonna be bubbly. That still gives the effect though. That still looks okay. I don't know if you guys can even tell actually. Like you can tell right there definitely. There's a bubble inside of the bubble or the opposite bubble. There's a, there's a real bubble inside of the opposite bubble. That's pretty sweet though. We have an extra hollow tail. I should have just poured this in white. It's harder to tell with this translucent kind of plastic. But we can throw a jig on this and test it in the test tank just to see how the tail works. By the way, I should mention that I added a filter to the test tank. And you can treat these things once in a while with bleach and that keeps it nice and clean, free of algae and mold. Excuse me, Chip, I'm trying to, trying to tell everybody something. It's vibrating like a millimeter, the tail is. You can't even see it. Oh man, it's just aerodynamic. Excuse me, hydrodynamic. One sec, let me try something real quick. Oops. You don't need chunks of plastic in the test tank. I sliced the top of the tail flat. So now it wiggles. That's all it takes. Well, I know what to do to each one. You just cut the back of the tail a little bit on the top. So it just has a complete boot paddle. The hollow tail didn't work. It's like the back was creating a vacuum and just pulling the tail straight. And it, it was vibrating a tiny, tiny bit, but I don't think it was vibrating a noticeable amount. So you pretty much have to cut it to a full paddle like that. And all we're gonna get out of this thing is a traditional paddle tail kick. It's got a good body roll too. I probably should have tested this first before I poured another mold because I'm gonna get the same tail that doesn't work, but at least I can cut them. Gotta do what you gotta do, especially when you make stupid, get ahead of yourself mistakes like that, you know? Gotta do what you gotta do. Not going as smooth as the last one. The walleye special, you know? That one had an action that was just perfect right off the get-go. And if I'm being real, I noticed no difference when it comes to the body catching water as compared to a normal smooth sided bait. No difference at all. That's a pretty good proof of concept though. I knew that. I always try to push it. I thought by maybe creating a vacuum in the back and giving it a concaved back that it would like mess it all up and get it to wiggle. But in this case, having the back of the tail scooped out like that was getting it to pull and it was bit like it wasn't moving at all. I just went for it anyway, I already knew that. I like the body. It feels soft, very forgiving everywhere. I think the fish will enjoy biting this. It'll feel very interesting to them. They won't want to let go, you know? Okay, this is gonna get way more orange. This is fire orange. And this is like a motor oil with a bunch of gold and orange color shift in it. It's a pretty gnarly color. Going for a kind of a craw that's very gold. I didn't even wait for that to cool down. I'm just gonna try to layer this over. Didn't work, but whatever. <laughs> that just kinda absolved itself into the other color. Oh, that still churned out all right, though. Like, those colors bled into each other, but that's all right. It's okay. <laughs> With that brighter orange color, you can really see the bubbles now. That needs to go away. Okay gold orange color shift. We're gonna fill this up and pour it out. And then we're gonna pour the fire orange back in there. We'll see how that looks with kind of the color shift shell. That fire orange is so beautiful. Oh, I know what I should do. I should do a dark color, pour it in, pour it out. It's really thin and then do a really light color or vice versa. And that's really going to bring out the honeycombness. That's what I need to do because that looks kind of meh in my opinion. Not super tantalizing. Let's get this more tantalizing. This is a dark color. Just added black to that uh, color shift. Golden orange. Still be a little sparkly. I 
I heat gunned it until I could start really seeing those nodes. So I have this fire orange and I'm gonna add a bunch of pearl pink to it too. It's gonna be super bright. Hopefully this is the best looking one yet. Yeah, that's the effect, man. I just need a cleaner mold. Those darn bubbles. This side looks better. Sweet, I'm glad that worked. It is only three hours later, and I think this is done. It's some pretty fast curing silicone. Let's hope that those bubbles filled in without issue. Already looking better. Oh yeah. Much, much cleaner. Those look way better. Now before we do anything else, let's fix this tail too. Gave the bottom a bit of a scoop too. It's gonna grab water more. We have a standard, very paddly paddle tail now. Squared off, twiddle kick. All right, back into a mold once again. All right, I got some white poured in there. I just heated it back up. Now we're gonna go with a dark color. Same effect, opposite colors. This should be the best looking one yet. Oh yeah. There we go. It's kind of bubbly. I can do a better job. I overheated the top. That makes bubbles when you do that. But there we go. Let's do some more of those. Best one yet. Okay, I think we're finally about to have a mold that looks good and produces a functioning bait. That only took three attempts, that's all. Looks extra good in there. Okay, we're going with like a grayish holographic, holographic flake, super small. The plastic's kind of grayish. In and out immediately. And then we have this fluorescent hot pinkness. I mixed a bunch of stuff together for this. Couldn't even give you a recipe. It just is what it is. So I wanted to see if the contrast is still there. Oh yeah, it is. Wow, that looks even better. I'm gonna have a hard time deciding thumbnail, I think, because that could totally be it. That's pretty insane as well. There's a lot you could do with this thing. You could pour that outside webbing and then do laminates on the way up. Belly color, middle color, top color with the webbing going through. Let's do that next. This is a fun mold. Very bright chartreuse. Maybe a green pumpkin now. I decided to make that color shift. That was a beautiful color shift and now we're gonna go with that gray top. Clean. First three colored one. It's kind of hard to discern that green color shift versus the gray on the top, but it's there. I do like the look. It is a good color, even though subtle. What a bait. Let's make that middle color more discernible. Okay, there should be a noticeable difference in color now. Here we go. Oh, I was gonna take an Instagram video of this. Excuse me, social media man, you gotta do it. Dude, chartreuse belly, kinda got a clown vibe going on, kinda has a fire tiger vibe going on. Not really though, cause the chartreuse kinda permeates through the whole thing. It's not black stripes, what am I saying? That is like a tripophobic clown tiger. That is exactly what that is. Beautiful, that's my favorite. I, I really doubt I'm gonna beat that. Let's just pour some more in single colors and have a bunch to go fishing with right now. Let's go. So this is a pretty chunky bait, but we're gonna go for pretty chunky crappie at Jesse's. It's really early still, but I think if I go slow, there's no telling.
I don't think they're ready. Too soon. We're fully loaded on baits. We're headed back to this spot. It's not my spot, but it's been my go-to this year so far. Looks like I'm gonna have the wind in my face. A nice 40 degree wind in my face. Looks like the river's back down. It's about how far down it was when they were biting. Still on the hunt for a tripo tolerant fish. We'll find one. Oh, that felt like a fish. I think that was a fish. That was a fish. Probably a quill back. Good to know my hook is still sharp. When you can pop scales off a of fish, your hook's sharp. Oh, this feels like a good day. Oh, I just jinxed it. I seriously just jinxed it. Oopsie doopsie. Feels like a good day. I got confidence oozing out of my mouth. Need to stuff it back in there. My tax return was accepted. Good news. They texted me. Crazy. We got the local DNR scoping things out. Keeping these fish safe. Making sure I'm not offending any of the tri tripophobic ones. Three sixteenths ounce. We lighten it up a little bit. Good. I haven't caught anything yet. No? No. Like 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. You ever hear like tripophobia? It's like a fear of holes. Well, good luck. Thanks. See you later. Yeah. See ya. Yeah, it's definitely not hitting the bottom as much, which is good. I kind of want it to float in front of their face, not immediately run into the bottom in front of their face. It's probably not so natural. Let's see if they're into the chartreuse. Okay, I think they're into the chartreuse. This thing's staying down too. Did I snag it? That was a snagged quail back. I saw it. Darn. All right, I got a bunch more poured. We're dealing with a chilly 35 degree morning. We're at a pond. We are where the crappie get big. I heard that bait keeper poke through my skin right there, but I did not feel it. It's too cold. <laughs> Fish finally on. Oh my goodness, that took forever. We found a tolerant one. It's official. Got a lot of muck in your mouth. Largemouth bass are not typophobic. We've made it official. Be free. Yeah, it's hard to see, but it's because that action's not even that good. That's 242 Bait Plastics Medium Blend. The stuff I was showing before was soft blend. I think just the whole tail design and what it is, possibly even the extra beefy body pushing a bunch of water away from the tail, making it harder to kick. Possibly the turbulence that all of the dimples cause, pushing water away from the tail, who knows? Makes a bunch of mini vortexes that just don't let the tail kick as good. It kicks a, a little bit. I was able to catch a fish with it. Not a ton of confidence in it. I might have just needed to design the tail better and make it a little flatter and more water catchy. That's probably just it. My bad. But it's official. Successful video. You need outside. You always need outside when I'm doing outros. That whole concept of putting 
a very aggressive texture or just very aggressive details in the sides of open pour molds like that though. Filling them up, pouring them out gives it a skin and then pouring another color in to see the contrast through the skin and you get that contrasting detail. That's good stuff. Gives me tons of other ideas. So, on that note, On to the next bait. Oh, that felt like a fish. Nice chunky little fella. It feels soft. Tripophobia. Oh, pretty cool, huh? It's okay. 